Throughout the entirety of my SFM tutorials, you may have noticed the trait. They expect you to know the basic stuff already. And honestly, I didn't really want to make one of these videos because basics was never really what I intended with this channel. But a lot of people are asking me, and I figured... Yeah, okay. When I was learning SFM, I wanted to know the advanced stuff and didn't really care about the basic tutorials because I already knew my fundamentals. But whenever I looked at SFM tutorials on YouTube, all I got was... Uh... <laughs> That's me. Now just looking at the stuff, I automatically became disinterested. Because from the posters I was used to looking at, it was really... stale. No offense. So before we even go over the controls, we need to go over some basics. The biggest mistake I see new SFM artists do is bad composition. Composition basically means the balance of detail. Based on the models, map details, and positions and angles of the camera. Let's go over a few examples. Here we have a bad composition. Ignoring the T-pose, what is wrong with this poster? Imagine a fulcrum. Now, if the weight was represented by a level of importance or detail, the left side is extremely tipping over. So how would you balance that out? Putting the stove on the left side of the frame and the scout on the right side, more or less. It is important to not put the scout too far on the right. Then, if you analyze the weight value again, we have a fairly balanced composition. If you don't understand what I just said, try looking up a few normal art tutorials. The controls for SFM are fairly simple. Using your mouse along with your standard WASD, you are able to control your camera. Holding shift while doing so accelerates your speed. The mouse wheel controls your FOV. If you hold alt while left clicking, it allows you to pivot around a selected object. If you hold alt while right clicking, it moves the camera forward and backwards in space. And while middle clicking, pans the camera. All being similar traits to other animation programs. Now that we got the controls out of the way, we can actually start with our poster. Let's take our previous example and use it for the poster. Before we begin, let's go over some rigs. Rigs are known as skeletal controls for models. Speaking of models, make sure you're using the HWM, also known as the Hardware Morph models. They are the counterparts to the in-game models that are lower quality. If you notice the way the default rig is made, it's fairly straightforward. Some people are fine with it just like this but it just depends on what you're used to. If you right-click the model, rig, and go to biped simple, now the rig has IK bones on the limbs, and a pelvis that behaves differently from its counterpart. However, the way I like my rig personally, due to animation purposes, is a combination of both these rigs. I want the IK rig, but with the default FK rig bones on the arms. Right-click inside the viewer, and make sure that you can see hidden objects. Then go to the arms, and take all secondary slots, and take the zero slider, and turn them down all to zero. Then right click the arms, and make sure they are visible. Now we have what we want. The problem is, SFM can't handle this, for whatever reason. The only way I know how to fix the frame issue, is to go into your clip editor, and make sure the session is shorter than 10. Now you will see your problem is fixed. I've said it again in the past, but it is very important that you don't use preset animations, unless it's for something like a hand. For the creative aspect of the poster, I keep it fairly simple for the tutorial. When positioning the model, make sure you don't let any of the following occur. No clipping, no model glitching, and most importantly, no unneeded stiffness. This can be achieved by relaxing the spine and shoulders. Try googling some reference images if you need help flowing the body in a believable way. When you are done with that, it is important to create an expression that works well with the pose and setting. I wanted him to be on the phone and be partially stressed. Don't overdo the expressions if it doesn't fit the setting, or it'll just look weird and awkward. For a new SFMer, my explanation of a face rig is to use the left and right slider to determine how much is going to affect each side of the face. Then play with the face rig on each setting until you become either familiar with the rig, or you just get what you want. This is where new SFMers fail almost immediately. Lighting is very important in making a good poster. Let's go over the different types of lights. To keep it simple, let's have three. Rim lights, volumetric lights, and normal lights. It should be noted that you should try to be realistic with your lighting, or at least in the aesthetic wise. I can't tell you the mass amount of SFM users who just plop down a white light or some colored light on a model and call it done. By using the color slider and intensity, you can use the lights to make a shadow with a different tinge on it. 
which should be decided on the atmosphere of your map. Keep in mind on how skin absorbs light in real life and how it scatters it across the edges of a surface. Then we have rim lights, which is essentially lines on a model that can be achieved by putting a light behind the character in terms of where the camera is placed. SFM has a limit of 8 total shadow lights in a session, so to avoid hitting that light limit, you can right click a light and disable shadows. The safest type of light to do this for is rim lights, and in some cases it can even help the rim light. Then lastly we have volumetric lighting, which can be enabled by clicking on a light. Then based on its volumetric intensity, it can be used as many other things which should be quickly apparent to you. Another important aspect of SFM is that unlike other animation programs, you are not always able to get the specific models you want. To get around my inability to have salt powder, I will just reuse another model and for a completely different purpose. In this case, it's a rock I got from the workshop. By scaling it with my scaling slider, I am able to repurpose the model. Now we get into our final touches. Go to your camera and you will find the depth of field slider, which is shown as a purple wall. It is basically a focuser. Put the wall in the center of your intended main subject, then use the aperture slider to determine how blurry you want it to be around your main object. A step I like to do is right clicking the camera, going into the element viewer, and turning up the quality to 12. Then right clicking the viewport, and turn up the quality to max. These settings may need to change if you're lacking a more beefy computer rig. If you want to see what the final render looks like, switch from your motion editor to your clip editor and give it a second. Now we have two options. More people will tell you to export as a poster, which in cases can be helpful, but if you export as a poster, it removes all the bloom in it, also known as the glowy light around an object. To render it with bloom, you will need to export as a movie. Then by switching to movie image sequence and only setting it to 0 to 1 frames, it will render a PNG or TGA file depending on what you wish for. This has been an introduction into the creative world of SFM. I hope I was able to briefly inform you on the basics. If you wish to know more about advanced tricks or how to Photoshop posters, I got some stuff on my channel. 